We absolutely do. Thank you so much for that, Zane. And this is powerful. Africa called, and the world has come. His Excellency, you called, and Africa is setting an agenda. And I want us to give the leadership, the people, all the different organizations in this room a round of applause for coming together to do this. This is a moment. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday some powerful themes came through. Two quotes in particular from the young delegates stayed with me. They said, our countries will be burning and drowning, and you will not be there to save us. You know, it occurred to me that countries are drowning and burning today. So if we don't do something now, what will our children and generations to come experience. The other thing they said was, we have to trust you, and you must trust us. And I thought such wisdom, grace, hope, and responsibility captured in one simple statement. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we must call to the world from Nairobi today and make it clear that it is past time to address the tough issues. It is past time to hold the difficult but much needed conversations on Africa, risk, perception, reality, resources, policies, regulations, systems. And it's past time for these conversations to be guided by equity. That is what we need. And Africa has the resources and assets, including mineral and energy resources, agricultural capacity, and natural capital to promote the global decarbonization agenda. But to realize this potential, the world needs to do its own part in helping steer Africa on the pathway to an inclusive, sustainable, and progressive future. At the fundamental level, that will require decoupling economic growth from environmental degradation. In the words of the late Wangari Mathai, an icon of Kenya and a Nobel Peace Laureate, and I quote, we are very fond of blaming the poor for destroying the environment, but often it is the powerful including governments that are responsible, end quote. In other words, we are all in this together. It will require our combined efforts to overcome this challenge. The spirit of Harambe, as we say in Kiswahili. And that means for those of you who don't know, let's all pull together, let's work together for a common goal and purpose. Zane, thank you for reminding us we have icons, we have role models all over the continent doing incredible things. Thank you so much. We also have a young, innovative workforce. There's so much potential. So our call is let's pull together. Thank you for coming. Thank you for ensuring you listen and are present and will act around a climate agenda determined by the African continent. An agenda that is going to safeguard our people, our communities, livelihoods on the continent, our economies, and ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, when we safeguard Africa, we safeguard the world. Can we give that a round of applause, please? Please. Safeguarding Africa is safeguarding the world. Now, to help guide us on this journey with an incredible lineup of speakers, Please give a very warm welcome to the Honorable Soipan Tuya, Cabinet Secretary, Environment, Climate Change and Forestry for the Government of Kenya. Mweshimiwa. Thank you. Excellency uh, President William Ruto, our host president, um, all our visiting heads of state here with us today, all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. History documents that Africa, and Kenya in particular, is the cradle of mankind. It is my hope and prayer that out of the cradle of mankind,
becomes the all-time elusive solution to combating climate change. African-led solutions to decarbonize and steer a low-carbon development pathway for the globe. We are gathered here today to make history as the continent of Africa. The world is facing many challenges, but none has become so apparent, so threatening, and so devastating as the threat of climate change. And we can only respond by making history at this inaugural Africa Climate Summit. Everywhere we look in Africa, there is a climate change related story to tell. For example, in Malawi, Hurricane Freddy led to the loss of 200 people and nearly 2 billion worth, 2 billion US dollars worth of damage occasioned. Last year, the Horn of Africa came out of one of the worst droughts in decades, where we lost hundreds of lives and thousands of livestock. 